Hello and welcome to the London Stock Exchange studios for another broadcast interview with Business Worldwide magazine. Well, today we are speaking with Cheryl Ward, Chief Operating Officer, and Lunga Mahlaba, Public Relations Manager of NJMPF, a leading pension provider in a South African financial market that is growing rapidly, but which faces big pressures. Across the world, people are living longer and need their savings to sustain them for an extended period of older age. At the same time, economic pressures like the rising cost of living, making it more vital than ever for people to invest savings wisely. Well, at the NJMPF, they are helping people to do just that. So let's find out how they do that. Cheryl and Lunga, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks, Cheryl, nice. thank you. Well, um, I'll come to you first, Cheryl. Um, of course, a pension fund, it's the responsibility to help people become financially independent in their older age. So how on earth do you achieve that? Yeah, at the NJMPF we have 30,000 uh, members, 10,000 of which are pensioners, uh, working across 54 municipalities. So yes, the responsibility is, is big, but um, to achieve that, uh, we've got to make sure that members contribute at the right levels uh, for, you know, for the right number of years. And the investment strategy that we work with is crucial because we've got to balance growth uh, with managing risk so that the outcome is a, a retirement benefit that the members deserve and they can live on. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Just to maybe then top on Shell's what Shell has indicated, we usually are uh, invested in a diversified uh, portfolio uh, in different asset classes where money is invested in cash, uh, equity, which are shares, and then bonds, um, and then also cash. So the, the, the investment policy statement is a very critical statement because it does give the mandate or instruction to the asset managers on how to allocate the funds within the parameters of the law because it's governed by a regulation, Regulation 28 in South Africa, on how much you can really invest in equities, how much you can really invest in cash and bonds. So that's where the population of the funds are usually invested. Yeah. We're also able to invest 30% of, of the assets um, offshore. Um, so that, that is what we do and the results of, of that enhance the, the performance. And diversity, would you say, is key to making it a safe Absolutely, investment, if there is yeah, one. Absolutely, diversification is, 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 is one of the key elements for the investment managers because they can't put, it's like putting, you can't put all your eggs, <laughs> eggs in one basket. <laughs> yes. So that's why we indicated that the, the, the shares, the, the bonds, the, the cash, the real estate is, is some of the asset classes that they put the money into so that they have a diversified portfolio which reduces the risk. So we, they do have a balanced approach yes. in looking at, at, at that. And the, the funds valuator each year will look at uh, the balance between the assets and liabilities to see that what is invested in is appropriate for the membership at the time. And from um, letting the member know how they're progressing, uh, we give them benefit statements every year so that they can see what they've accumulated. And one of the things that we've introduced recently is the net replacement ratio, which shows somebody what their first pension would be, or their first pension payday, um, after they'd finished working. So they can see the percentage of what their pension will be against their last salary. Yes, yeah, so that sounds like you make it uh, as simple as you can for people. Absolutely. But Lunga, it can be confusing, can't it? So how do you tackle that? As we were talking earlier, uh, retirement funding could sometimes be a bit complex, but if, at the fund we believe in trying to simplify it so it becomes much more easier for the member to understand with the objective of trying to change their behavior and attitude. So some of the things that we engage in is that we conduct road shows throughout our province of KwaZulu-Natal, um, informing and educating our members. And we also do pensioner endeavors, which is also a form of roadshows, which we conduct to build capacity of our pensioners. We also have um, digitalized uh, platforms for us to communicate, like mobile apps, our interactive website. Uh, we also have social media in which we engage our members to build their capacity and their understanding of retirement funding. 
That's brilliant, isn't it? Social media, because yes. you can simplify things Absolutely. and use different um, yeah. ways of, of getting people's attention, can't attention, you? Attention, yeah, yeah. In, in, in a very streamlined manner. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, people are living longer, though, aren't they? And as I mentioned um, in the introduction there, that is one of the big challenges facing all pension funds around the world. Um, how do you tackle that? Well, on our defined benefit funds, it's a little bit easier for the member because the fund's responsible to pay them a pension for the rest of their lives or their uh, spouse's lives. And a link to that is an inflation increase every, every year. So um, that's a good benefit. Uh, for our Provident Fund members, we're still trying uh, to get that uh, more streamlined um, from, from a country point of view, national point of view. Um, but we're introducing um, compulsory annuities where the, the, the Provident Fund retirement lump sum is then invested and the parameters around drawing that down um, with the effect that it must be sustainable. So you can't run out of money when you're 70 because you've still got a lot of years to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that is the big challenge, isn't it, Lunga? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, we, we, we also take it a bit uh, uh, further uh, by actually building their capacity uh, regarding their understanding of retirement funding. So over the years we've run financial literacy programs whereby we try and um, educate them uh, along the lines of things like what is a budget, how to save, uh, what is your credit score. So if you put your, your, your things in order before retirement, you are able to then save more money and then it did last you longer. So it's not only a fund-based approach but a holistic approach mm. where we try and build their capacity so that they can realize their monies uh, or save and invest their monies in a longer term. Mm. And uh, people living longer is a global problem that mm. I think um, the industry is grappling with. Mm. Uh, but it makes us look at the ways we can find a solution. And one of those that's coming through clearly is the, the level of costs, whether it's to administer a fund or the asset manager, fee, the fees, um, so those are things that we already engaged in um, because that has an effect on making your money last longer. Yeah, definitely. It's an interesting subject, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think uh, you touched upon this then. It sounds like you work with um, your customers very, very closely Absolutely. and give them the confidence. But that's what I wanted to ask about. How do you install that confidence into the consumer? Well, uh, there is a, a matter of trust. Um, the more your members or your pensioners uh, trust you and the, um, the results that you show, the easier it is to, to carry on. And we, we're lucky enough to have uh, won some governance awards because that also a, a clean audit, a good governance award makes people believe that the pension fund that they're in um, is the right one for them. It makes them feel safe and that's what, that's what we need. Yeah, and you mentioned the, um, the awards, because um, you also make sure that you um, have a responsibility economically with government and social uh, business practices. Um, what do you do um, for the community then in that sense? Well, um, our asset managers, and we have uh, a, a number of them, they are instructed to investigate the ESGs of, of the companies that we invest in. Uh, we've, we invest in total at the moment just over a billion pounds. So in, in our RAND terms of 20 billion, it's a lot of money. Uh, so we've got to make sure that that money's uh, invested in the right kind of things. And uh, in, in, when needs be, those asset managers have to go and interrogate the CEOs of companies and about certain of these strategies. And then we're also involved in a, in a more localised community project, which Lunga has been working with. Yes, yeah, we definitely are very excited about that. But we've been uh, working with um, uh, children with special needs um, within our local community uh, and a private company where we build their capacity, those children, and we educate them about finances, financial terms, and just try and, and encourage them to, 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 to look forward into the working environment and just try and give back uh, through, through enhancing um, they are their capabilities and and why do you do this then why do you do these schemes uh, we, are, we, we, we basically believe in 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 enriching uh, our, our our communities and our members and that that is it's done through having that heart 
heart and, and having that feeling, not just business, right? Having that feeling of, of, of caring about your fellow neighbors and your communities. And that is done through understanding your situation and environment and then trying and engaging in whatever way you can without uh, exposing too much of funds of the, of the people who have invested in your mm -hmm. fund, but doing it in a more responsible manner. I see, so mm -hmm. you have that res social responsibility Absolutely. and community Definitely. that comes mm -hmm. from that, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, Lunga, something I wanted to ask you about yes. as well is um, digital, we touched, this on, touched on this before. Yes, um, you yes. have new features on the app and the website, don't you? Absolutely. What I are mean, those? I mean, we, we, we're basically drawing up with Cheryl, we're drawing up a strategy to digitalize every aspect of our um, like uh, interaction and communication. Um, so we've built a, a social media, uh, not social media, but mobile app uh, a platform whereby we are able to educate our members on financial literacy. So we tell them about things like how to save, how to invest, where to in, not where to invest, but where to go if you wanted to invest. So these platforms actually allow us to reduce the cost of communicating, right? Because we are able to go directly to our, to our, to our members and pensioners, and it also increases the speed of our communicating because now there is no middleman per se where you go to the post office or you print the information, you just go directly to the person through the, the, the mobile application or the interactive website and even the social media app. And Shell can maybe add about the, um, the voting, which is also a very exciting thing that I'm um, mm. doing online. Yeah, Tell us. <laughs> yeah I am our online barcoded voting. Um, we vote for, or the members vote for, uh, the trustees on the board of trustees. And it used to be done on a postal system, but our postal system has become more and more inefficient. Uh, so we've created a, an online platform where people can vote um, through the website, on their mobile app, if they need to still, still do it via courier or post. Um, and that will be next year. And it, it, the system will create results instantly. It will avoid duplications or fraud. Um, so we're very excited about that. That's brilliant, yes. isn't it? Digital is changing the way that we do business, isn't yes, it? Um, now, we, we spoke about this just very briefly. Cheryl, mm -hmm. you mentioned the awards that you yes. have won, um, the company's won. So um, tell us more about that. How do you, they're for good governance, aren't they? So how do you build a culture of good government? governance yeah uh, well we've we've won awards in a number of areas but the governance ones probably mean the most to us because a retirement fund good governance is everything and um, we've been in existence for over 70 years and the, the fund has got a reputation of being trustworthy ethical and we you know we've got the responsibility of carrying that on but I think it all comes from the top and we're lucky enough to have a, a strong board of trustees and management who instill that and, and ensure that the staff that they employ, you know, have the same standards. Um, we, ha we have to get a clean audit every year and we do. We audited um, by the Auditor General. Yeah, we, yeah. we also subscribe to the, the, the King, uh, the, the King mm -hmm. Codes of Governance, uh, Corporate Governance, yeah. uh, with the Institute of Directors, and we, we have been receiving clean audits from them yeah. to show that our governance structures are, uh, are in order. Yeah, and we also got a set of policies that, um, that we run the, the, the system by. So, you know, we've got all to tick all the boxes and make sure that we, we've done all the things we need to do. Um, there's also a lot of training that takes place both for the staff and for the trustees to make sure that we're up to date with um, the developments in the market, with, with legislation, um, and I think we, we're getting it right. Well, what about legislation in the future? What legislative changes will um, come in to, to affect your members? Yes, I mean recently uh, the, the, the government, uh, the, the, the systems or the financial sector in South Africa is, is transitioning or evolving. Uh, uh, government has introduced a twin peaks model which is built on a prudential system and a market conduct system. And uh, so the, the industry is evolving and currently there are laws 
which will probably come into effect in the upcoming months, uh, uh, the, the default regulations, which are particular, uh, particularly uh, pertaining to retirement funding. Uh, but for us as a fund in a maybe micro level, we have um, built like TCF, treating customers fairly, policies and initiatives so that we are, um, we are actually able to build, uh, build more better relations with our consumers. Mm -hmm. Or it, members, yeah, and pensioners. It does sound like you have really good relations with your consumers. Yes. Would you say that? Yeah, I think we do. We try harder and harder every year. But the new legislation, default regulations, um, is really putting the member at in the middle, the you know, at the heart of what we do. And uh, the, the type of things that every pension fund in, in our country has to now look and prove is are you doing the best thing for that member, whether it be in the investment options or portfolios they can choose, um, whether it be in the, the cost of your administration, the cost of your asset manager looking after the money. You really got to answer to that. And um, I think it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. Well, finally, what is the most satisfying part, would you say, of what you do? Well, for me, it's, in, it's improving the outcomes for the members regarding anything pertaining to their retirement funding and to also just ensure that whatever strategies or plans we have in place are affected in a very professional and very efficient manner. Yes. And Cheryl? Oh, for me, it's the dedication of our uh, Board of Trustees and our CEO and the fantastic group of um, people that work for the fund, uh, the passion that they show, uh, the time they spend to make sure that they actually improving somebody else's life so that when those people retire they get what they deserve. Well I've definitely taken away from the fact that both of you and the company you definitely seem to care about the people yeah. that you work with and that's fantastic so we wish you all the luck in the future and for everyone thank who's you. involved in the fund so thank you very much thank Cheryl, you. Thank, thank you very you. much Linga, thank you. thanks for being thanks. here today.